Welcome, I'm Chris Frew, CEO of BioBuzz Networks. I'm thrilled to be here today, Philly Builds Bio, third annual life science symposium. We're in the heart of Philadelphia where hundreds of attendees and over 50 speakers have gathered to talk about how to build the life science ecosystem and the sector here in Philadelphia. I'm honored to be here today with Jen Gilbert. Jen, thank you for joining us. Good morning, I'm really thrilled to be here. Wonderful. Would you take a minute to just introduce yourself? Sure. I am uh, Jen Gilberg. I am the Deputy Secretary of Technology and Entrepreneurship for the state of Pennsylvania. I work in the Department of Community and Economic Development, where we focus on uh, economic growth of key sectors within the Commonwealth, and life sciences is, is you know certainly one of those. Well, I just heard your keynote, and I understand how important life science is to the state of Pennsylvania. Can you tell us a little bit about the Shapiro administration's vision for life sciences in Pennsylvania? Sure. So when the Shapiro administration came in, we had not had a economic plan over 20 years. And so the first thing that he set out to do was tasking the Department of Community and Economic Development under the Secretary uh, Rick Seiger to develop a 10-year plan that really focused on areas where we think we have the right to win. And quickly, life sciences bubbled up to the top. Um, it's certainly a huge economic driver uh, to the state. It's responsible for a big part of our GDP, our job growth, and um, the amount of R&D coming out of schools like Penn, like CMU, Pitt, Penn State, um, and others is astounding. And we're trying to make sure we anchor it here and not lose it to other states. So we are ground zero for cell and gene therapy um, out of Penn. Uh, we are the uh, proud um, home of the... Uh, uh, the art, uh, the <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, Nobel Prize winner for the COVID vaccine, and so you know we want to make sure that first we're amplifying what's going on here, and also making sure that we're keeping it in the Commonwealth. That's wonderful. I love the concept of the right to win based on our strengths. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the accomplishments that you're proud of so far in the administration? So getting the plan um, over the line was, um, was certainly um, a huge undertaking and a proud moment to roll that out. And we actually went around the state and we held roundtables. I think there were 12 altogether in different regions of the state. So it really was a team sport to get it done, um, getting input from everywhere, not just in, in Philly and Pittsburgh. And... Um, so, you know, that was a big accomplishment. And then really getting uh, the budget to align with the strategy. So one of the missing elements um, of, or challenges for growth was not having places to put manufacturing. So when you look at the 10-year strategy, the budget kind of is going to align with the 10 years and you have to put certain things in front of others. So year one was historic in getting a half a billion dollars um, out of the bipartisan government um, to invest in and clean up sites. So when we do grow our manufacturing or grow our life sciences, we have places to put manufacturing. We're not losing those to other states. So that was a huge effort. We're really proud of that so far. When you think about um, this vision, um, what are some of the things that are part of that vision that you see that are needed for Pennsylvania to really tip, uh, tip the needle in advancing the sector? Yeah, so I think we're, we need investment. So what we hear from a lot of both the startups and the established life science companies is that um, we are under investing in that. And so we, we do um, really need to, I think, step up our investment. Um, you see other states putting considerable resources uh, into this sector, like Massachusetts, Texas, North Carolina. And again, to compete, I think we're going to have to increase our investment. And I mentioned uh, the innovation fund in the keynote. That's really what we're going to be focusing on, I think, moving into this next budget cycle is how do we resource uh, innovation and life sciences is a big part of that. 
Uh, what role does the private sector play in in how we advance this vision and, and to help support the creation of companies and the retention companies here in the region? Yeah, it's a really, um, it's a good question. It's a really important role. So when we look at um, creating clusters, like, you know, yes, it's great to have the startups. They're going to have the big growth, but we need the Mercs, the GSKs, the J&Js, and the established companies to anchor here because that helps with workforce development. It helps with talent attraction. It helps with a lot of things. So having the partnership and really anchoring in some of the large private sector um, when it comes to venture capital, you know, that's private sector. We need those dollars focused on our state. Um, we work with the university system on talent. Um, so we, it really has been, and, you know, in Philadelphia, the, the fun part about coming to Philly is, you know, in a room, I see all the partners <laughs> that we work with and they show up every time. Like we have the chamber, we have, um, the workforce development boards, um, you know, we have B Labs, we have like all of these uh, private sector organizations and nonprofits that just show up to do the work at every event dealing with life sciences. It's the same faces in the room. And that's, I think, something that I don't know that it's unique to Philly, but it's certainly an asset of Philly. Yeah. Well, going into that concept of winning, you have to show up to win. Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, Philadelphia is, uh, you know, Pennsylvania is kind of booked in with Philadelphia with a, a great life science hub and yep. Pittsburgh, which some exciting things. <laughs> oh yeah. So UPMC is doing a lot of great work. Yeah. yeah a bioforge announcement yep. Yep. And, and some things happening out there. Um, how do you see, you know, kind of connecting life sciences across Pennsylvania? Yeah. Um, we see states that have invested heavily in innovation now see that translating into manufacturing. And so, you know, if you take Massachusetts, they dumped a ton of money into Cambridge. You know, that's where the innovation happens. That's where all the VCs are. That's where the universities are dumping out um, IP. But now you're seeing manufacturing in Worcester and Lowell and areas that really needed those high paying jobs. And um, so that could be Pennsylvania. So if we invest in the IP and the science, we will see it pay dividends into the what we call the T, which is the middle part of the state. And that's why the half a billion dollar investment in PA sites was so critical because we want to be ready when that expansion happens. And we want to make sure we have the places and we're not losing the manufacturing part of our life sciences investment to other states. Uh, <clears throat> workforce is always a, a critical component to the life sciences yeah. sector because of the, the specialized skills needed. Um, what do you see that is uh, important to, for this vision um, to happen around the workforce and development and initiatives around that? Um, so that this is one thing that I'm really proud of the work that's being done in Philadelphia in particular is there is a ton of work being done around workforce. And what they've done is they brought in industry leaders and startups and asked them, what do you need? Like, what are the talents you need? And then they've gone out to community partners like Philadelphia uh, Community College, uh, Montgomery County M Community College, uh, <clears throat> the different nonprofits. And we're trying to bring everybody to the door to get trained for the roles that are coming. And a lot of the roles you don't need a degree for, that you can get some training and get a really nice high paying job as a lab tech. Um, we're looking at um, just really making sure that pipeline is ready, but not, but balancing it with the need so that we don't have all these trained people and then no need. So it's really been impressive how they've organized in this region, all the nonprofits, all the schools, and really getting the balance right. So it's it's something I am in awe of every time I come to one of those meetings. Uh, a, a mutual friend of ours, also a keynote uh, speaker today, Philly Bills bio is Rebecca Grant. She yep. is awesome. Rebecca was our. <laughs> She's a force. She yep. is a force. <laughs> Rebecca was the BioBuzz Workforce Champion of the Year Award last year. Uh, she, so she, won she, it. she rightly deserves that. Yes. And and that's a community award. So it was voted yep. on by over 7,000 yep. people for her. Not so surprised. Yeah. Uh, so you have good partners yes. in, yep. in that initiative. Yep. Um, uh, Jen, uh, 
there's a lot to be excited about. There's a lot of, uh, I think, winning in the future of Pennsylvania. Yeah. What's your message to startups or companies that um, are looking for a place to grow their company and, and considering Pennsylvania? Yeah. So um, first of all, it is great in so many levels. It's an affordable place to live. So um, I grew up in Pennsylvania. I did leave for 30 plus years and I lived in Silicon Valley. And let me tell you, uh, anyone thinking about moving to Silicon Valley, uh, be prepared to spend a lot of time sitting in your car. I think my commute was 12 miles door to door, an hour and 20 minutes. The cost of living is obscene. And I think the one thing that really makes me proud about being back in Pennsylvania is, you know, teachers can own homes, you know, construction workers can own homes, lab techs can own homes. Like, you know, it's, it's an affordable place to, to live and grow and raise a family. So that's, I think, a big um, check. And I think you'll find that we are absolutely looking to build the infrastructure to support startups. And we're on this, you know, we're still, there's still work to do, but we're not stopping. And I think the organizations within Philly, the um, incubator spaces, the, um, the uh, early stage grants and, and funding, we're really working hard to provide that infrastructure and we will all, you know, only continue to add to it. We're not in a, you know, starting to take away, we're looking how we lean into it and add to the infrastructure that's here. But it's a great, you know, I've lived in many states and this is a great state to live in. And I think it, for life sciences, you're going to find there is a ton of support um, through the various networks here. Well, I'm sure the, the whole community is excited that you came back. <laughs> I don't know. It's a force. <laughs> and there's a force for winning here in yeah. uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, we're proud of BioBuzz to help get your message out to yeah. our audience all across the, the country. Yeah, well, thank you for... Uh, for you know, picking Philly and and uh, for getting the word out, we really appreciate it. And I often say um, it's clear that Pennsylvania was founded by Quakers because we're not good about amplifying our successes. And California was founded by gold diggers, and that's you know they're <laughs> they're risk takers. So um, so uh, yeah, we need you know we need support like. BioBuzz to help amplify all the great work that our partners and the entrepreneurs and the scientists are doing for this industry. Thank you. You're very welcome. We're happy to have that role. Yeah. Well, Jen, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Wonderful. Thank you. My name is Chris Frew, CEO of BioBuzz Networks, here live at Philly Builds Bio. Mm-hmm.